Let's go live to someone who I watched uh, put uh, the cake into now his lovely wife's uh, Jill's face uh, many, many years he ago. He didn't smash it, did he? I, you know what, John Bloom, Voice of the Suns, I don't remember. What did you do with the cake at the wedding? What'd you do? Dude. Dude, that was almost 23 years ago. You I believe know. that Jesus. noise? This oh, is, this my is, gosh. You're listening, Are you kidding me? You're listening it's been that long. <laughs> By the way, my first word was cake, so we're, we're cutting to the core right now. Out of Will belt. knows. I love me some cake. Yeah. I don't love wedding cake, per se. It's not the best kind of cake, but if we want to break down, you know, the positives and negatives, the pros, which are far outweighing the cons yeah. in respects to the category of cake, I am down for it. Well, listen. It's what, interesting what, you say that about wedding cake, because I had a small wedding, my... My second wedding. Yeah, and so one? we had it. Well, actually, both weddings, I had boutique I was, actual cakes, not like some sheet cake, yeah. which tastes right. a lot like sheets. I should talk. Quite yeah. frankly. Well, wait a minute. No, sheet. thank yeah. you, John. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll be well, here till six. Well, both of you ought to get whacked upside <laughs> the head because, wait a second. Don't say you don't like wedding cake. You get to make the wedding cake whatever you want it to be. Exactly. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, unless, of course, someone else is making Thank the decision. Yeah, John. Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> That's more accurate. By the way, you're listening to a man who uh, proposed uh, on the uh, 17th tee box at Lincoln Park. That's Thank uh, you for Lincoln bringing Park me Park back Garden. there. Yeah. Thank no, you, Mark Garden. Because that's, um, yeah. Yeah. that's one of the things that keeps me going. And what a Chamber of Commerce day we had today. In uh, downtown San Francisco, by the way. Thank you very much. Yeah. To the powers that be. We were all wearing our raincoats. We were expecting yeah. the worst. I've got my daughters and my wife in town, and uh, we had a fabulous day here in your city. And my, uh, well, it was one time my city, I guess, too. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. got lucky because uh, we've had the bomb cyclone or the atmosphere crash. Oh I'm gosh. not sure which one we've been dealing with. No, it was fir first postcard day since uh, 2021, we just exactly. found out. Yeah, so <laughs> here we are. Uh, you're here for it. Nice job, John. Uh, but uh, Kevin Durant is not. Um, what is it that he's got against Warrior fans? What's the deal, for real? You know, I haven't had a chance to ask him, but it does seem like it's a little more than just a winky dink at this point, isn't it? I mean, uh, I couldn't believe that when you, I think you told me that, but I, I then read more about just the fact that he has only played here once, uh, since winning, uh, the Larry the last time. And, uh, it was when there were no fans. He has yet to play for Suns fans as well. You got to remember that his three games with the Suns were all on our last road trip. So they're clamoring and chomping at the bit. So these are like the two fan bases that want to see KD the most. It's clearly the case. And what do you make of the Suns before you had KD? It was a little bit of an up and down year compared to last year in the regular season. All the hope skyrockets when you get KD. He slips in warm ups. Now he's out. What's the state of the Suns as we get down to the nitty and the gritty here in the regular season? It's a little funky right now, Dibs, because, uh, yeah, there's been such highs uh, with the anticipation of KD coming back from the injury, which, remember, he was dealing with when they made the trade. So it took three weeks before he made his Suns debut after the trade deadline. And there was a lot of anticipation through that stretch of just, you know, when is he going to make that debut? And, and the home games were, you know, crazy for, as far as a battle to get tickets, uh, even when fans didn't know whether or not he would play. And uh, ironically, both games against Oklahoma City, he was expected to play. The first one, uh, he was a scratch before game day. And then this last one was during warmups. And it was just such a freak incident it almost seemed as if it was a prank or something made up. You, you just you don't see that happen with a guy just taking an uncontested layup, not in the layup line or with a bunch of traffic, just by himself in his pregame warmup. So uh, that happened, and now everybody's adjusting to life without KD again. And by everybody, I mean Suns fans, the players, the coaches, everybody involved, the broadcasters for that matter. And uh, it's going to be interesting because this is a team that has had some success uh, you know, when Kevin Durant hasn't been involved, they were three and zero when Kevin Durant played with them, and it was seemed like it was just seamless with how he fit with this group. And now you're just tantalized by that, and uh, hoping he gets back sooner rather than later. They said three weeks before they reevaluate him. You guys know the drill with that, so you huh. just don't know uh, when when he's going to be back. This is John Bloom on with Willard and Dibs, ninety five seven. The game, John, a Bay Area guy, but now the voice of the Phoenix Suns. And in town for this one tonight, John, you know the deal. The Suns gave away a lot of their good role players to get Kevin Durant. Now they don't have Kevin Durant. So what is this Suns team as compared to the one that's beaten the Warriors up pretty good earlier this year? Yeah, I mean, that was a similar situation. Uh, you might recall now the Suns are 3-0 and against the Dubs this year. This is a, 
a very rare occurrence against the Golden State Warriors in general in the NBA. Uh, and uh, the last win here on January 10th came without really any of their starters. Uh, and they got a huge game from Damian Lee against his former squad, you guys might recall. Uh, and that's what it's going to boil down to with now no Mikel Bridges and Camp Johnson. Those are the two big names that they sent to Brooklyn who have been playing their butts off since becoming Nets. Uh, and they had a few weeks head start on Kevin Durant, as we talked about before he even made his debut. That made it also difficult for Suns fans to kind of embrace the whole trade because it was a very uh, bittersweet situation to send two guys that you saw since they were drafted uh, grow into really good NBA players and now potentially even better with a new opportunity. So it's going to take some of the other guys. And by those guys, I mean Josh Okogie, who has stepped into a bigger role than anticipated. They got him in the offseason from the Minnesota Timberwolves. Initially thought he was just going to be a defensive stop but he has started to knock down shots and be aggressive, taking it to the basket. So that's been exciting to see that progression for the Suns, and he worked his way into the starting five. A lot of people were wondering who's going to be the fifth starter when Kevin Durant came, and, it, and Josh Okogie seemed to win that battle. Torrey Craig was another guy that was considered for that. A guy that I think is huge for tonight and in general with the matchup with the Warriors is campaign. That's Chris Paul's backup. He was out for a while. Uh, but he has had some big games in the matchups with the Dubs, so I think he's excited to, to get another crack tonight. And Chris Paul's been fantastic lately, but he's been playing a ton of minutes. So we'll see uh, you know, whether or not Payne can take off uh, a little bit of the burden off his shoulders. Uh, John, Mark ripped off your great nugget earlier, and I want to give you full credit and give you a chance to really put it into proper perspective. He mentioned that the Warriors have never been swept in a season series when Steph, Clay, and Draymond play in all the games is that is that accurate john are you making stuff up no that is accurate we had our <laughs> crack statistician on the sun tv side come up with that and share it with us because we we knew this what that was at stake tonight with the suns uh having an opportunity to go four and oh and steph clay and dre all played in the previous three games uh and they have never been swept in a season series when they all participate so this goes back you know now a decade of basketball to pretty amazing feat that they pulled off to this point we'll see if they can do it tonight i know both teams are probably jacked up to get a win and for for obvious reasons as we're getting down towards uh, crunch time at the end of the season here john bloom phoenix suns with us uh right here on 95 7 the game earlier this year things were chippy uh with, with these two teams uh in what way do you expect that to bleed into tonight uh, that's a good question. I don't know that it will uh, carry over unless, uh, you know, the, the talk starts ramping up a little bit. And look, Devin Booker can absolutely hang with any trash talkers in the NBA, and he has gotten under a bunch of people's skin, and the latest being Clay Thompson in that matchup you referred to. I don't know that I've seen Clay react that way. He got tossed uh, from that game in Phoenix earlier this season. And I was very surprised. I think I wasn't alone. A lot of people were surprised that, uh, you know, that's where he went with it. Uh, and, you know, afterwards there was a lot of, uh, you know, talk from both sides that was full of respect. So it wasn't one of those deals where you felt like, okay, there's a whole bunch of bad blood here. Like you maybe feel with the Grizzlies, you can elaborate on that more than I do. But from afar, it seems like there's a little bit more of that with those guys. The Suns fresh off a beat down at the or a beam down, I should say, at the hands of the beam lighters in Sacramento. <laughs> what word would you use to describe Sacramento's run so far this year? Ooh, um, you know what? For me, I am uh, happy for them. It's, it, that's not a word. Um, <laughs> Am, am I going to say adorable like your partner? No, I'm not going to go there. Thank you. Oh, Thank come you. on. I, I, it is. No, it's I'm, I'm, don't no, it, it, well, it's it adorable. Is. I, I'm not going to say it's not, but I'm just, that's your word for that. Okay? Yeah. That is your word. Thank I'm you. not going to it. Couldn't you imagine the Kings like in a stroller and, you, <laughs> and you're walking down the Embarcadero and they're brand new and they got like a little purple onesie on and, and right, like a little light bright coming out of the stroller and have somebody walk over and go, oh, my gosh, it's so adorable. Couldn't you envision that's that? looking like a true Warriors fan, and that's fine because you are. <laughs> but as somebody who has been a broadcaster for a team who just finished a decade of fertility before this latest run uh, of success getting to the playoffs, still not the ultimate success that you guys have witnessed, and I know that that's something that will be uh, held over all Suns fans by Warriors Nation forever. But here's the thing. The Kings to end this streak is a massive deal. 
regardless of what happens in the postseason. You're a Kings fan. All you've wanted is to get to the playoffs. You got kids, our kids, age, Will. They've never seen him get there. That's a big deal. For me, I've witnessed it. I saw my kids experience it and how big of a deal that was in the Valley. So I am proud of what's going on up in uh, where both my parents actually grew up and went to high school. And, uh, yeah, we got ties to Sacramento. Thank you, you know, John. Well. You got a lot of class, John Bloom. I hope some of that rubs off on your uh, former San Mateo Bearcat here. Uh, I, I think that ship sailed, Dan. Yeah, I yeah. think that they feel a little, a little late on that one, man. Yeah, that hasn't rubbed wrong. off by now. Yeah. Yeah, that's oh hurtful. <laughs> uh, John, just one more before we let you go. Uh, Jordan Poole, what do you make of his on again, off again, up and down roller coaster trajectory of a season? You know what? I think he is in a tricky spot. Uh, I, I always kind of felt that because in some cases, Warriors fans, maybe even the coaches, uh, the his teammates kind of identified him as next. You know, and I don't know that that's fair. Like, I, I, like whether it's next Splash Brother, whether it's, you know, the next star for this basketball team moving forward, uh, it all kind of happened pretty fast for him. Uh, and I think that there's a lot of uh, uh, mood swings, which are more confident swings with a young player like that when you give him the money and the, ex- the expectations that come with it. Now, uh, is he not poised to do great things in this league? Uh, there's nothing that shows me that that's the case. I just think he's going to be streaky right now because a lot of times when you're in that position and in this particular position with Steph Curry being out for stretches uh, and him having to maybe have a different role and then Steph comes back, he's got to completely adjust that role. I think that is definitely what he's dealing with with respect to trying to keep the confidence at an all-time high. And when you shoot it the way he shoots it, when you're aggressive that way offensively, confidence to me is the absolute key. Uh, and so maybe he gets to a point where that is more consistent uh, when he has a more consistent role, if that makes any sense. Absolutely. Yeah, you're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1, San Francisco, always live on Twitch, YouTube, and the free Odyssey app. Uh, John Bloom, voice of the Suns, but also a great Bay Area 49ers fan. Is there anything you'd like to say uh, to or about Jimmy Garoppolo on your way out the door? Yeah, thanks, Jimmy G. Uh, you know, thanks for, for the effort and uh, being there whenever you've been called on with class, professionalism. Uh, it's a message and a, and a model for many people to follow. And uh, good luck with the Raiders. I mean, look, I, I'm not a Raiders guy. I'm a Niner guy through and through. My wife just got me a beautiful 49ers golf bag, which I took me last week to Pinehurst with a lot of pride. We got Brock Purdy totally. rocking the house, and he's from, you know, uh, Arizona, so people don't even hate me anymore more rocking the Niner bag in Arizona now because the quarterback's from there. So there's a lot of good stuff as far as that's concerned. But with Jimmy, I'm going to say thank you. And apparently we got a, a real strong D lineman today. Is that the case? That is yeah, the case. Yeah. We also we also got Sam Darnold. Have you been running around and you don't know that yet, or did you know that? <laughs> oh, I, I saw that, but that's not a headline for me. You're a USC guy. I know, you know, former USC good, radio guy. So you're yeah, all totally. in on the Trojans. I get yeah, it. Don't you, they, you know, me. I, I hope Petros. Sam does well, but for my money, let's go with the uh, young guys, with, with Brock and Lance. And it's, it's, somebody's going to get it done out of those. You, you should know good better than that. Take right Sam there. Darnold is not a former Trojan. He is a former San Clemente is it, uh, Triton or Titan? That oh, sounds about right. Yeah, okay. he he he. Ah. My my nieces and nephew go to the same high school. They love Sam. They're going to be all excited. And in fact, my nephew and uh, brother in law are huge Rams fans and huge Sam Donald fans. So this is going to make their head shake, and that's what I want. I'm in. I'm yep. in on that. As yep. long as the the Vaccaro yep. family is excited about it, then I'm excited as well. There it is. There it is. John, have a good call tonight, John. Uh, have a great call and uh, have an enjoy, excellent call, John. Enjoy Chase Center. Thank you. And tell KD uh, we miss him. I'm going to try to fit a Huey Lewis lyric in tonight. That's my goal. Nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, w- uh, can we get a preview or no? No. No, okay, but no. you might get. You will, we'll maybe let you play the highlight though, after the Suns win. Oh, wow, I, I mean, love that. Okay, easy with after the Suns win it. The yeah. Warriors don't lose at yeah, Chase, t- John. T- this t- game's not being played in Phoenix. Plus, Tim Roy would be really ticked off if we start playing your highlights on ninety-five-seven the game. Good call. But, uh, anyway, yeah. um, hey, he likes Huey too. Yeah, who doesn't? <laughs> who doesn't? Um, John, if it's, if it's hip to be square, you're dead to me. No, it's not going <laughs> to I'm just letting no. him know. You're way more intricate yeah. than that. You're yeah. safe. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, Johnny, welcome to town, buddy. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, there it goes. That's John Bloom.